I ate so much cheese yesterday. Oh no, that's just going <laughs> to cock you up. Hi everyone, you're listening to the Bialucci Podcast. Uncensored and completely unedited discussions about life and everything in it. We hope you enjoy the show. Yeah, ready? Three, two, one, and we're live. There you uh, go. We are hello, hello, hello. So Charles, do you want us, uh, we've come in halfway talking to you about cheese. Do you want to carry on yeah. saying? Uh, Boxing Day is cheese day for me. Um, yeah. I didn't even have like, I didn't feel, I, I ate a lot on Christmas Day, don't get me wrong. I drank a lot. I didn't feel too bad. But like yesterday, I, I really ever did it. I just like literally just, I ate cheese for about three or four hours. Oh, um, and then I had like loads of cake. And then like, I was like, oh, yeah. Jesus. Just to pack it all in, just to pack yeah, it all yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Finish it off. I was like, yeah, I don't know, some, some cake with yeah. some brandy cream on top as well. Oh. I was just like, oh yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm, wor- I'm worried about going to the toilet. So what I'll do is I'll clog up my whole entire <laughs> <Exactly>. system. <laughs> so, yeah, that was yesterday. I sort of had a nightmarish kind of limbo sleep where yeah, cheese yeah, nightmares. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. You yeah. know, and what, and what here cheese I am. were you eating? Um, I had a bit of, uh, I had like this huge lump of Stilton. Oh, God. <laughs> was it that this, big? Uh, the, yeah, it Charles was. Charles yeah, has no, his hands about a, a yard apart. <laughs> it really was. It was like half a circle, and the circle was like that oh, big. Oh, God. Kid Lord, that's a lot. And like that thick as well. It was like, oh. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, really nice as well. And I had some uh, this weird mature cheddar stuff that was like encased in this wax block. You had to really dig into it. It was good. Where did you get all that from? Uh, shops. I mean, you weren't presents. You went out and bought a load of cheese. No, no, that was all for Christmas, wasn't it? That's, you know. Is cheese part of the Christmas thing? I don't know. Yeah. I, I, was, I was working yeah. yesterday, so I don't know. Yeah. Well, yesterday yeah. was Boxing Day, so there. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Well, I was working both days then. Yeah, so there. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> what were yeah, you working on? Uh, hustling. I was the magazine that had to go and do, do the bloody office, and I was up there in the middle of the night taking measurements and whatnot. And then I'd get on the phone. Of the room, right? With, builder and trying to juggle builders to see you could do what and get the best price they'll have to go back up there again to speak to them then have to sign for this and that oh well, there's no christmas for me mate you got cancelled this year trying to sort us out um so i mean uh, it also got cancelled because of covid yeah yeah that well it, yeah i mean to be honest i haven't really noticed it's just me non-stop working <laughs> with the covid in the background um oh they i heard on the news though they said um apparently the 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 cure thing whatever they've got it's more effective than they thought the vaccine. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's so nice. Yeah, that's good. It's really um, good news. But yeah. I don't know if that applies to both. The, they got the new one, haven't they? And they got a new new one apparently as well. Oh, Is there on. a new new one? I heard there's a new new one. Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know. Anyway, um, so what do basically, you, mean you don't know. That uh, let's go back to the cheese. Um, cheese. So basically, you're not well, going to go to the toilet for about two weeks now. Then. Um. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Probably. Okay. This is um, a free podcast, ladies <laughs> yeah. and gentlemen. <laughs> We'd, we'll have, we will have to do a sort of jingle where we could, Karem could just press the button intermittently just to remind people throughout <laughs> the show. Just, just, <laughs> thank you, but this is a free podcast. Um, and what did they do? We we played games with my family over Zoom. That was uh, that was fun. And um, not like Truth or Dare. No, no, I never played board games and stuff. Uh, it was quite fun. Yeah. What you was you playing? Board games over Zoom. Uh, what? You played board games over Zoom. Yeah. Well, the truth, you know, the trust system. Well, yeah, like one person was obviously had the boards. Game oh, I see. And, uh, yeah, we all just, um, yeah, answer questions. Do you know there are sort of like B level, B level sports that are sort of like they're quite niche, but they're quite big in their own thing. So after, what, there's like arm wrestling, which is you know there's a world championship of arm wrestling, and it goes on all around the world. <clears throat> you know, there's thousands of people that take part. It's constantly going. You know, these secondary sort of sports. Yeah, uh, but they're taken seriously. You know, even bodybuilding things like that. And there is one, and it's the World Slapping Championship. Oh, yeah. I've Have you ever that. seen it? Yeah. yeah. And it's not like, again, it's not a little thing. It's not like a few, it's like the gurning competitions where there's a few blokes in a pub up in Yorkshire, and then they do one overseas. Like, it's big blokes, in all seriousness, like standing there and cracking each other around the face as hard as possible. It's just to one of those. End. To, 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 to who can stand it? Who can stand? And this is adults. It's like this is a serious thing. It's not like a little thing. And you go. It's one of the things where you you go. If the aliens saw that, you go. Oh, it's I think so that's embarrassing. Fine. It's so embarrassing. Like, I don't know how. We're not one of those. I don't know what. No, I us. think I think let the aliens see that and be like that. This is this They're is not what you're letting yourselves in for. Yeah. 
Yeah, all that this off. isn't this isn't the bottom. This is about the level. Yeah, it's about mid. Yeah. Race, yeah, yeah. But when I was watching, I thought they're taking this seriously. This isn't like a little thing. They practice and they and they're smacking each other in the face. And that's your. I mean, become a boxer. Why? Why stop at the? Why do such a low level that you're just going to smack each other? The concussion's the same, probably worse because. No, actually, it's probably not worse. No, it's but, not um, you hitting on the head. No, in the face, they're smacking each other on the cheek, like a slap. A full yeah, I think people literally get cartwheeled around, you know what I mean? Like, going, and people get spun, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> it, it's pretty it's pretty horrible. It, it isn't fun. Like, but what goes on, like, it's one of those things people that want to put on a list, and I just want to follow them for the week. <laughs> to just, put, go, just put them on a list, keep, yeah. keep an eye on them. Yeah, yeah, when I say put them on a list, I didn't mean, yeah. Oh, God, mean, what is that, Charles? A pint of... Uh, cob. Is that a bucket of what are you drinking? <laughs> Pepsi or something. Or cola, other fizzy drinks um, are available. Some of it's cola, yeah. yeah. Oh right, okay. Oh, he's on the booze. <laughs> Where's your tipple, Andrew? I don't know. I've seen got water her. actually. I haven't got. I haven't got my usual tipple. Are you on a detox? Got it in a... No, oh, no, look no, at no, that. Look at that. Oh, right, that's cool, man. Oh, that's yeah, cool. my housemate got me that. It's a teak. It's a Mars attack. Mars tiki attacks. Mug. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, that's good commitment there. That's well done yeah. there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can almost I can almost see like um, a Victorian candle being put in there. You creeping around the house at night <laughs> with a <the> candle <laughs> with a little with hat old, on. <laughs> yeah, the old timey uh, sleep. Or like stuff. a Christmas yeah, yeah. Uh, ghost story type thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah Christmas like Carol. Ebenezer Scrooge. Yeah, that's with it. a ghost about to visit him. Yeah. Well, that's what he thinks it is, isn't it? He he originally accuses Marley of being uh, some undigested cheese. Ah, uh, yeah. Manifest. Yeah. So I don't know what that is. I've only got the Muppets Christmas Carol to go off, and I'm not sure how historically accurate it is. <laughs> Historic, it's not historically accurate. <laughs> you mean you're wondering if there was like Miss Piggy in Victorian times? Yeah. And... <laughs> Ratsu Rizu, was he really? Yeah. On... <laughs> yeah. Did, uh, did Kermit really work as a clerk? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, animals actually used in... <laughs> Older times. I thought it was older times. It's a different time back then, wasn't yeah, it? Exactly. I mean, yeah. you know. We couldn't afford humans. Back then. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're, they're great. They're, I love the, the Muppets. It's just, it, it. everything was good was good and evil was evil. And there was nothing yeah. in between. I think, was it the one where they go to Hollywood and they've got the, 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 the oil, the Texan guy, the baddie with the big hat and he's called like... Um, oh, bad, Baron Nigel Texas. Badman or something. No, yeah. it's like Texas... Oil Baron or Tex Baron or Texas the Oil Baron or something like, and it's like he's like, and it, at the end they always come the baddie always starts crying and they've come good in the end, and it's like that's what you want from life, that's that and that's that over there. In fact, right, I was at, um, I had to go in Tesco's. It was about two days after I, I spoke to you in Sainsbury's, and I went in there. I, was, <laughs> I keep trying to go in times where I think there won't be people there, but they're just constantly shopping. People are just constantly shopping. There's no they probably say the same about you. Yeah, I mean, I put myself in that. But I went in. People be shopping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, they love shopping. Is that, is that your Bernie Mac? Uh, <laughs> what like, voice this is. That's my 90s uh, stand-up comedy routine. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, I, so I went in Tesco's and I, I went in and there was a, loads of people about. And I see a bloke walking around and he's got the, th- the mask under his nose, right? Which oh, so you classic. see, they're just idiots. Yep. Then I see him about two minutes later. And he's got the mask off. He's just taking it off. And even his girlfriend, who looked a bit sort of trampy, she's got it on. And I was just looking at everybody around him. And I thought, you've taken it. You've t-. Anyway, he looked about 25. He turned around, went past me. Big tattoo on the neck. One of those. And I thought, talking of like good and evil and all that. I thought that the tattoo on the neck, that replaces the tattoos of like the, the 70s. Where when you got a tattoo in the 70s, mate. That was you going right. This is who I am. I'm not. It's not fashion. This is before bloody David Beckham and Robbie Williams started getting sleeve tattoo. This is when nobody got tattoos unless you were a tattoo sort of guy. And uh, yeah, that yeah, that's so back then. If you saw someone with a tattoo, you went, "Oh, bloody, he's got a tattoo. Look on him." And but then it became fashionable. But really, the neck tattoo—that's the new original tattoo. When you see that, you go right. Okay, there's nothing to discuss here. If you're in an interview or you, it's like, okay, I see the neck tattoo. That tells me everything. I'm not going to say what it tells me. It just tells me everything that you've gone. No, do you know what? I'm going to whack it there. It looks scummy and I'm going to put it on anyway. Um, the, yeah, face, that on. the face tattoo is is becoming yeah, that's more, the king. more of a thing. Yeah, But that's the king of tattoos. Spider that's, web all yeah. over your face. Yeah. That is I've given up. I'm never going to work again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. 
that, that's when like I, giving up on mainstream society. And I, yeah, <laughs> I don't, yeah. I don't I've have tapped out. No use for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no bank account, nothing. There's yeah. nothing, no money. Yeah, everything's in the dark web. Sort I'm of fringe. Thing. I'm fringe now, yeah. basically, yeah. Um, and then I see him and I was looking down the aisle and then there was a security guy just standing on the aisle watching like as everyone walked past. I thought, right, let me just see what goes on here. So I'm just walking, watching, watching. Just went, the guy looked at him, nothing, straight past him. And I honestly think they're t- more to blame than him because he's got stupidity and ignorance on his side. Your job is to police this store and you've just looked at somebody not wearing a mask, which can kill people. And you've done nothing. You've literally just looked at him. So what are you being paid for? To do nothing. And well, on the, the way shop out- said the shop said quite early on, you know, uh, sort of spokes, uh, spokesperson, spokespeople said that um, shops weren't going to police it because mm. they just didn't want to have to deal with. But I thought people. it's illegal. And it's not a legal requirement. Well, uh, on public transport, shop. it's a legal requirement. It, I swear, in shops, it, it, it they part. I swear, they did pass it. That shops should, and so do people who work in sh- in shops. Yeah, I've seen signs say it's now a legal yeah. requirement. I'm sure I have. I yeah, but no one gets no one gets no. fired. I haven't seen anyone. But that's what I mean. But why have that? a security no. guard going? What is your role here anyway? And on the on the way out, there was a guy stood by the Tesco the door with the um behind this excuse me machine thing, mask up under his nose. The security mm-hmm. guard well, as at the entrance, and he just go. Oh, human bit I don't know who to blame because you've got if you're stupid it's sort of like you, there's a bit of a get out card there because you're a stupid idiot but when you're sort of you're in the professional role of having to police these things and you're doing nothing and you're not doing it yourself you're worse um, anyway yes yeah, so that was my little rant about Tesco's but it just I just thought oh, I'll give up with human beings um, I got uh, I got barred at I was on the way back. I think barred last, at? Barred. I think, yeah. Oh. Someone went, bah, to me. Oh, literally, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made the sheep noise. Um, for what? For why? Because I, I don't know. I, I think I was coming back from last last uh, podcast, actually, a couple of weeks ago. And um, yeah, I. They'd seen I, the show. Yeah. <laughs> I was angry, obviously. Angry, angry. Just yeah, the podcast. Yeah. I was like, oh. They were were, were they not I, booing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah you I should, wish I hadn't said You might be lying to oh. I think it was your first review, your first physical review of the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I don't know because I, I, I sort of, I think it's, I think people, I think people should wear a mask, and I kind of give some people dirt. Sometimes, if I'm in the mood, I give people dirty looks. I don't yeah. say anything because yeah, yeah. I just think, uh, you know, I don't want yeah, people not in your my fight. business. Yeah, and I don't want people in my business when I'm up to doing weird shit either. So. Um, you know, let's not point fingers. But um, so like I gave this dude like he this guy was like chilling, like in this on this bench, and he was just didn't have a mask, and I just did, get, did double take, gave him a dirty look, um, and then he just went bad to me and laughed. But what's he bearing for? Because I'm assuming because I was wearing a mask. You're he's saying I'm a sheep. So you say you're in the wrong. Yeah, yeah, because I'm an idiot and I'm a. I'm believing the conspiracy. And but the sheep. fact is, isn't that the thinker. irony? Yeah, but isn't that the irony that they're saying, you know, it's like when goffs dress up to be original and you go, well, why is there 100,000 of you at this festival all dressed the same? Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. so it's all these anti-maskers going, we're, we're free thinkers because someone on YouTube told me that I shouldn't wear a mask. Yeah, because me mean, and all my mates, like, yeah. decided not to wear a mask. If you, were, if you were a millionaire and you just had the time to... I, I would genuinely stop and go, okay, let's have a conversation about it. Why, why do you think this? And let's let's analyse what you think. And so where's your information? Mine comes from science across the globe on every on every platform. What does your comes from? Um, something on Google that I read once. And you go, does that not sort of intellectually say that maybe... Because you're believing something. So why are you choosing to believe the nothing, the lunatics? Because it makes you feel... I think a lot of the time these, you know, with all conspiracy theories, it makes you feel that, oh... I know the truth. I know this. I know that. You know, I'm into the thing. Makes yeah, you special spe- when you're just yeah. like everyone yeah. else. Because it's, it's, and I've got the answers as well. I'm yeah. the one. I know the answers. Know well, we spoke about this yeah. before, and I, I said it is. It's it's an overcompensation. Whenever somebody sort of aggressively says things about it, it's because mm. you're hiding your own insecurity. It's literally that your shit life's bad for you. You don't know anything. You know you don't know anything, but you have to feel special. So it's a luck. It's a delusion, really. It's like a. It's a real delusion. 
Um, mm. Talk, talk uh, delusions. There was um, Trump. Um, hey, was, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's he been up to lately? <laughs> yeah. um, uh, uh, so he he pulled one of these. You know, in, when he went to Scotland, he did the old con, like he usually does. Where um, so he, he I think, so where, Fe- where, fell where, over, went to the shop, fell over in the aisle and sued them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he so when he went to uh, Scotland and he said, look, I want to build the the um, the golf course here, and it's going to be the big mansion and all that, uh, the the big uh, uh, hotels and all that. In fact, I saved it somewhere. Um, and that. They said, we can't build it here because it's a conver- conserv- uh, conservation zone. You can't. There's the other. Now, if you've tried to do anything on a conservation zone, they, you forget it. They, they're not interested. There's nothing. You, you could, your ha- building could be falling down. And if you put the wrong brick in, no, no, conservation, you can't. You know, it's ridiculous the things you'd have to jump, jump through to get anything done against the conservation. But um, he went in and said, yeah, I'm just going to dig all this up, sod the birds, sod the this. And then uh, he went to the prime minister, or th- and he went, and he overrode the local government. Went, yeah, yeah, that's all right now. Let him do it. Bung it in, and he was supposed to bring. Um, I saved this thing here. Okay, right. So here you go. Right. So this is the Scottish one. So he promised one point five billion investment, which, um, to, which actually turned out to be less than fifty million. Six thousand jobs have dwindled to actually being ninety five jobs <laughs> two mm. golf courses are now one an 80 an eight story 450 room luxury he- hotel never materialized at all nor did 950 timeshare apartments instead all there was is a, an existing uh, manor house was converted into a 16 room boutique boutique hotel that's it out of all the 1.5 billion hundreds of thousands of from he said there was going to bring um, six thousand jobs, and it went down to ninety five when it actually happened. And then the mayor's like, "Oh yeah, so oh, apparently he was lying to us." Oh well, that's good there. But now what he's done is there's a place where is it? It's um, in Wisconsin. Hang on. Um, so he promised them thirteen thousand jobs. We're going to knock all. We, but unfortunately, they had to knock a load of houses down with people living inside them. Move them on to sort of squalor, like the worst places. Gave them nothing. Um, they fought it and then they couldn't get away. Then in the end, he ended up getting moved, moved out. Um, he actually went on, on online and he was talking about it. And he said, oh, it's just a wasteland. There was just fields there. And people were like, no, we lived there <laughs> and you kicked us all out. And there were legal battles over it. Anyway, so um, it's a, a, it, it was going to be something called Foxconn, which was a factory in Wisconsin. So eventually got everyone kicked out of their own houses, gave them nothing and moved them into squalor. Um, there was in, it was supposed to be 13,000 jobs. Um, and it turned out to be, I think, 280 jobs in the end. Um, but all these people got moved out, so, and then it turned to nothing. It didn't, no, nothing happened there. So all these people got moved out. It failed, like he was supposed to build this big thing, the factory. The factory didn't happen. Um, and it's just, and you go, and this is just so they've now just said, oh no, that it's all over. All that money was wasted. It was all rubbish. It failed to do the thing. But we've now moved all these people out, and now it's nothing. There's nothing there. Um, and he just go, but he did this. Didn't you like do a little bit of research on him? Like when he was saying, well, like this is a Google search. So when you're talking about millions of pounds worth, so I think it was four point five billion to do this thing. They were going, you go, but. This was like he did the same thing about six, seven years ago. And when all these prom you do know it's a compulsive like compulsive lie. Like, how does this not get through to people? It you can only go, well, it's corruption. There's backhanders, they know what yeah, it I was is. Gonna say, he's clearly he's yeah. That's just it. It's just, well, I've got my money, it all failed, but you walked off with some money, I walked off with some money, and they walked off. Everyone with some money. gets a little taster in these those types of deals, yeah. Even it's, the ones that yeah. collapse, like everyone everyone gets money gets sloshed around, everyone gets a little taster. Yeah, and everyone, then everyone walks it, yeah. away. Yeah. And the, the, uh, oh God. And now they're talking about in, in America, they they they're commoditizing uh, water, they're privatizing it. So like because they've got droughts and all these things in California. But they're saying but the, the big companies have caused these droughts um, and now there's droughts. You're going to privatize the water to make it more profitable for you. Like it's like, it's bloody insane. Like it, it's properly insane. Cause in, in, um, I think in California specifically, there is like laws on how much a shower head can pump out. I think it's like one gallon per, uh, um, 
per minute, something like that. It's an actual law. You can't you can't even buy a shower head from another state and transfer it in. Like it's that ridiculous because of the okay. the droughts. But you've got like golf courses everywhere in California yeah, yeah. and especially ones where certain people from certain backgrounds aren't allowed in it's well known you can't join <laughs> I mean it's like a it's a known thing it's not even a little thing you remember and when the, certain folks weren't allowed in the golf course yeah. Pepperidge Farm does <laughs> <laughs> I remember when somebody's telling me and it was like 2017 I'm going what now still now I go yeah you can't yeah, join there if that's not and it's known and you go but the problem is they've got all these droughts in california but these golf courses <laughs> thousands of gallons per week just to keep the grass a little bit greener um and that's pure corruption the only reason it stays like that's because of corruption because all them people in there they're high powered so they're not gonna of course you how can you have water restrictions on shower heads when the, the golf course is just pumping out water onto their grass constantly mm. And it's just corruption. It's like, at what point does... Uh, it's the thing, because I keep... Uh, I, when I look at things about Rome and things every now and again, pop the head up, and you go, With this, we haven't learned anything. And you're talking about thousands of years. How can how can you still be talking... Let me talk like Mitch McConnell, who's corrupt throughout everything. Everything, fight everybody. Allegedly. At, <laughs> well, can you even say that at this point? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, hey, I'm just trying to say... But, yeah. Uh, um, but it's it's just like it's just the Senate and all that in America. It's just the corruption is no different. Nothing's changed. So, like, when do you just stop doing this? When do you just go? This is ridiculous. Like everything that the Republicans and the Democrats, it's all tax. It's tax people, tax deductions, tax this and that. It's the same people, and the only people that should hold them up to account are the media but the media in america they're so rich that they're now part of that big bracket of um, uh, elites so it's just one big corruption thing and there's no way to it's again the old gordian knot there's no way to break in because uh, they're not reporting on things properly you have these little smaller channels that speak about things but the, the, the democrats are no different to the republicans and the big media companies the fox and the cbs they're they're the no different to the republicans and the, the, the democrats it's all part of one big company so you go well. What? How does this get resolved? Like it, it, the the privatizing of the water. You that you cause the problems, and then the people at the bottom have to pay back because of your problems, and then you privatize us for the things you've caused. Like it's it's bloody insane. I said, well, how does it stop? Apart from pulling people out of buildings, that's, that's... Um, yeah. There's someone I I watched a video ages ago, and someone was saying we need to get rid of money from politics, and I'm like. I don't know if money is politics. That's yeah, what it that's is. what I'm saying. I don't. Yeah, I don't. See well, it, uh, it comes back to distinction. Yeah. yeah, but that's the Gordian knot, and it's this thing that we every generation wants to kick the can down the road to the next generation because nobody wants to go. We've got to pull the carpet under. There's no. It is. It's the. We've got to flip the board over. There's nothing else. You've had so many generations, and every generation gets a new set of lies and a new thing to look forward to. But the the screws tighten slowly every single time. I mean, you're looking at, you know, when we talked previously about the um, the driving thing that they're bringing in now. So you haven't got the the, U, the ULEV charge, you've got the, drive, the thing charge, the congestion charge. Now they're expanding it to the outside of London. And you go, they're just turning the screws on everything all around you constantly. In fact, <laughs> right, so I was in the shop the other day and, um, uh, well, I was the other day, it was today. And... I always just think back to right. I went, what was what price was that? And I hold it in my head of various products because I see them getting smaller. And because I don't buy things all the time, I, I just every now and again I notice a chocolate bar and it shrunk again. I had a feast ice cream, right? <laughs> Which, if you don't know, obviously it's a it's a sort of chocolate ice cream with a small thicker chocolate inside it. I had I thought let me just pick it. I picked it up. It was so small <laughs> that it's always, I was always embarrassed for the company. <laughs> And what I, the, the, the internal bit of chocolate ice cream used to be a, the size of the actual full size yeah. ice cream. Now the chocolate inside barely covers the stick. Anyway, and I yeah, saw a chocolate yeah. today. It used, to, it used to be quite substantial. Yeah, thick, and now it's just it? covers yeah. the, it barely covers the yeah. stick. And today, in the suit, I was in Tesco's and um, they had a whole new range of chocolates, all the same brands, right? But they're now yeah. tiny, but they're 40p each, which was when I remember growing up, like, well, I say growing up in the 20s. That was what the price of the chocolate bowl was at 37. So look now, this is the 37. <laughs> They're selling yeah. that for 40p. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> look at that. That's been quite sold. cheap for a Snickers, I would have said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But look at 
the size of it. <laughs> I remember when I remember it's the size of, of a coat. chocolate finger. Do you know chocolate finger? It's a yeah. bit bigger than that. Yeah. And they're selling that for the price of what the whole thing used to weigh about seven times that size. So they, they just completely bit by bit by bit. So now they're just taking the piss. Just taking the piss. I, I remember when a can of Coke used to be 27p from like a supermarket. And like, that's ridiculous. I mean, yeah, now I, I now understand it's like a quid. the prices of things going up, right? And you go, yeah, things go up and blah, blah. You go, yeah. right, I just want to see a scale, a visual scale of things going up, right? I then go, your yeah, housing, this, that, the price, chocolate baths, <laughs> toilet roll, but I watch it all incrementally go up bit by bit by bit. And then bung on the wages on that scale. And you go, hang on, all these things are so up, 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 everywhere, up, 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 constantly, up, 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 and then the wages just go groanings like a sloth, slowly crawling, kind of being static. I mean, real time, yeah. I mean, sometimes dropping, yeah. And you go, is that what you have to do with people? You have to go, look, look, what, look, everything's going up, and I want a big list of everything from parking charges to ULEV charges to chocolate bar charges to parking charges. Absolutely everything. Just and know everything will go up, but there'll just be this one bit that you go, what's that one there? That little scale that stayed the same. Oh, that's your wages, mate. <laughs> okay. Can we see the wages of the elites? And that you see that just rocket <laughs> right off the scale. Hang on, they're only like there's this rocket, there's this shot off into the stratosphere, and the working class wages are just creeping. And all it is is the difference between it's like they're pushing the difference between how everything much costs and how much they can keep your wages the same before you snap. And it's always just, we'll keep them just about able to feed themselves, bung them all into houses where they've all got a share. Get the cars, get rid of the car, can't afford the cars, the travel's killing them. But how much will they put up with before everything's so expensive that they snap? And that's what it's been taken to. I, mean, I don't know enough about history, but I know there have been revolutions. So have there... The, the, like the French Revolution, was that to do with differences of money and all that, or was it other yes, things? Yes, uh, yeah. uh, uh, quite a few things. I mean, uh, economics is usually a big driving factor yeah, in any kind of major. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because people will only. This is why there's not going to be a civil war in America, because most people in America are fairly are fairly comfortable. You know what I mean? And that's a good thing. Ultimately, most people, people have, you have to give people nothing to lose before they're willing to literally like kind of put their lives on the line. Well, the you know thing I mean? is, if you look at like the trickle down economics, uh, when, when like, I remember looking and it's the best things are quite simple. They, they do experience where they have like a load of glasses stacked up, you know, 12 on the bottom, then six, then four, then one at the top. And they go, basically, this is how trickle economics works. And they pour it on. And the elites are the first class, then you've got the middle class or the secondary elites, then you've got all the middle class, then you've got lower middle class, then you've got the working class. And when you pour the water on, the, 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 the coloured juice, whatever, the, fir- the, the elites, that fills up immediately, full, full. Then the second load of elites, they all fill up immediately. Then the middle class ones, they don't always fill up equally. You know, some do, some don't, which is normal life. You know, you've got doctors and you've got firemen, blah, blah, blah. And then it goes to the working class. And when you get down to the bottom bit, some of it's a little bit full, quarter full, one's half full. And that's all the different working class jobs. But then you'll have the big spill. That's all the waste that comes off of those glasses. And it's like a perfect representation because a lot of those glasses for the working class ones, they don't all fill up equally. Some of them have got nothing inside them. So you can have working class, but you can have working class people. And they've got iPhones at a thousand pounds you know, a single person, but then you've got a family of three with a single mother. It's got nothing. And you go, this trickle down, it doesn't work. It's just, it's no. a big con. It's a complete yeah. con. And like I said, when they, when they, they say the middle classes, not all of them have got some, some of them are struggling. The working classes, some have got more than others and some of them have got nothing. But the big spill where all the, that's the waste of the elites where it's just spilled out on backhanders and all that. And that's another big bit of money. <clears throat> But it's just, I, I don't know, like when we talk about the revolutions that have, have happened, why did they, what what was the boiling point? I know there's probably a few different things, but is, does it come down to struggle with money or is it other things? Um, it usually comes when a minority uh, hoard power and wealth from a, from a majority and don't allow them access to power. I mean, the Russian Revolution... Um, it was a long time coming because the, the the aristocracy refused to give any power to the people, basically. 
and living and living conditions were terrible in Russia, like towards the beginning of the around the First World War. I mean, living they were they were literally an agrarian society who'd been doing the same kind of stuff for about you know four five hundred years. <laughs> I mean, it was yeah, it was, it was bad. And and again, people were so poor and people were starving that they had nothing to lose. So they would so they did march and they did get slaughtered in their thousands. You know what I mean? But they kept on marching when, and they kept when, on going when the poverty. Like I've said before, it doesn't just affect the working class. It now starts to affect the armies and the police. Yeah, it starts to creep up. Do you know what I mean? The poverty creeps up until there is so many people poor that those elites, it becomes offensive. <clears throat> um, what was the family? Because it's all abs- it's all abstract until it hits you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like COVID. Co- COVID's a very good example because it was it was kind of like ah oh, that that's a far away problem. That that's yeah. kind of happening in Asia. That's happening in France. It's happening in London. You know, it's happening down the road. But it's not really affecting me. And then everyone, I think, had a moment when they were like, oh, this is actually impacting. On I my better life. put my mask on here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even even a simple thing like oh the shops are closed or I have to wear a mask on the bus. You know yeah. what I mean? But like everyone had a moment when they were like oh this is actually having a, a, a personal impact on my life and my routine. Yeah. What was the the family the Versailles not the Versailles family? What was the the family that just it, they ended up killing them beheading them? Do you mean Borges? the Borges? 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 No, that was that? Italy. That was Spain. Yeah. Do you mean the Bourbons? No. The, the what was another? Oh, no. What was the name? The, of the Romanovs name? were the Russians. No. We, yeah. Not... Give us a country at least. Was it Fr- France? <laughs> I thought it was France. Yeah, that was the Bourbons. Bourbons and delicious biscuits. Yeah. Mm. Oh, is that where it came from? Um, I think oh, it must have been the Bourbons then. Then um, I think somebody said the difference between the, was they a family? It was a family, an elite family. Yeah. I yeah. I mean the, the the Bourbon royal. Fa- you know, like we have the Windsors. It's a dynasty. Yeah. Right. I, like, well, I, I think some, uh, somebody said they, they said the difference between the Trumps and the Bourbons was that the Bourbons did a lot for arts and crafts. <laughs> like <laughs> the Trumps has done nothing, just got hoarded. Well, well, a lot of these people are. It's patronage of the arts and everything else. And we all go, oh, isn't it lovely that there's all these palaces and artworks left behind? And you're like, yeah, but you know. Lot well, isn't that what Rome, like, yeah. like Rome, like, like the, the sort of pacifying the massive? Look, we've got this massive stadium. Look, you've got to revolt, but look, here's a big theatre. Well, it was the theater. idea of bread and circuses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, there wasn't uh, there wasn't um, uh, the decline. Of, the Roman Empire just got too big, but also no society lasts forever. We're talking, you know, seventeen hundred years if you include from the you know Roman Republic, which had an empire. So in the th- I wonder if it's to do with BC, power. I think when things become so powerful, everyone's got the hand in the till. There's enough to go around. So then you get infighting. Because that's I think that's the difference with like England and America. Because America, the, the corruption in America, you've there's so much money that everyone's trying to make a couple of quid. At least in England, it's sort of like there isn't that much money in the till where everyone at every level has got their hand in the till. There's only a certain few people. Whereas in America, from the media and the thing, there's so much money that there's so many corrupt people that they then start infighting and that brings them down. Um, I mean, arguably, again, going back to Rome, I'm sure we've, we keep focusing back it's to Machiavelli, Rome. It's Machiavelli. It's Machiavelli. <laughs> yeah, it's but it's... in. Yeah. But in in the Roman Empire, and certainly, um, well, even from its its early again, we're talking about something that lasted nearly two thousand years. But um, what would happen? The problems would arise when somebody else got ambitious and went, "Oh, I quite fancy sitting on that throne and wearing the purple and being all that," and so they would be declared generals. So th- certainly, the Western half was, um, you know, you'd have the year of the five emperors, and you go, "What do you?" And no, no, you know, there's not like, oh, and he passed away peacefully in his sleep. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, like yeah. when there's a pope elected and you're like, they've elected him. He's fucking 85. What are you <laughs> talking? Like, how long's his tenure going to be? Well, um, so in Rome, they all like that. They all had their own little armies. <laughs> you know, you go, uh, <laughs> yeah, but that was also part of the. So the consuls would have to lead the armies. It was. It was the idea that you would. You know, who would have thought that in order to hold political office, you might need to have some sort of experience of public service or public life. Um, so yeah, so they would be. I mean, again, that was all for rich people. We had, you know, even the even the plebs, even the from the you know the people who supposedly supported the plebs, none of them were poor. They're populists. Well, I think with um, when um, Caesar, Astro-turf. 
mm. when when they realised Caesar was going to get done in, and he and they said like, I'll, I'll make your deal. Like you you give up your army, and then I'll give up my army. <laughs> and he go, well, hang on, how many? You've got your own armies. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. that was why you couldn't cross the Rubicon. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, that the, you know that's where it comes from. Oh, listen, yeah. we're, we're losing our under fifty five year old listeners here. So let's <laughs> let's get back. Yeah. What else is going on? Andrew, did you have a nice Christmas? I did, I did. I just uh, it was me and my housemate because I didn't get home in time for the. Uh, I didn't beat the the tier four changes, oh, okay. uh, so I what, wasn't um, fan. So what what are you drinking there? What was in your? Um, uh, this Mars is water. Attacks? I did have I did have um, vodka and You're, ginger ale earlier. What's that you drink usually have? Uh, whiskey usually. What whiskey brand do you go for? Uh, uh, a few expensive. different ones, but if they're yeah, they're expensive if they want to sponsor the show. <laughs> yeah. If they don't, I'll have a Jack Daniel. No, we'll just have um, a hashtag whiskey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, no, it's a bit. Well, I got a nice bottle of old Paul Taney from my brother for Christmas. He sent it here oh, once so he heard yeah. the lockdown was coming. He was like, oh, quickly. So oh, Amazon, buddy. you know, as much as it's the devil, it can be beneficial for that. And it sort turned of thing. up intact, did it? Yeah, yeah. Oh blimey! They're really good at packing their booze. What what did you um you get uh, Charles anything nice? Um, we know you had cheese, we know you had that. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> uh, People gave me lots of booze. And oh really? Comics. Okay. So yeah. oh, comic. What what seems like they knew me? Booze, comics, uh, and cheese. That's me done for yeah. the year. <laughs> I got some wine, some De Serrano, some rum. I I spot a bottle of Quantro on the uh, on the back there. Oh, that's oh, just what? drinking. Oh, good, good, good. Spot, yeah, it's good eyes there. Oh, what a... mm. The, the, the... I can spot a booze from two, from forty paces. <laughs> Hang on. What's uh, what's he going for now? What is that? Is that some homemade? Is that That's some scrumpy crazy. or something? <laughs> what is this? Some di serrano. Amaretto. Sorry, amaretto. Oh, okay. Fake fake di serrano. Oh, God, he's oh just not a stoke from the bottle. Not a stoke from the bottle. What's that song ah. tonight? I'm drinking from a bottle. <laughs> That's the extent of my knowledge of pop culture. You got, oh, <laughs> that'll get the cheese going. Yeah, I know, fuck it. He just, he just straight up. I thought he was going to be like, "This yeah, is what yeah. I got for Christmas." And he was just like, "Wafted ah. under his nose." Like, <laughs> I know. He was just like, oh, "Dad, Daddy needs think... his medicine." Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that'll keep me going for a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, the shakes. Yeah, the shakes. You're right. like home, mate. The uh, oh, bit of booze will sort out that fire. <laughs> <laughs> You've got quite a, a Christmassy jumper on there, Andrew. If that was a present, was it? Uh, it was a present from my girlfriend. I wouldn't say it's particularly Christmassy, maybe in this oh. light, but it's uh, it's very thick and warm, so it was very pleasant. Uh, how are things with your missus? Yeah, she's fine. How, how long have you been dating for now? Like six months, eight months, maybe? Uh, no, it's over a year now. Yeah, oh, blimey. Yeah. Sorry, I probably should have been more effusive because she listened to the show. <laughs> it, things are going excellent, dear. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't Love be better. You. Yeah. I was going to say, there's only one acceptable Christmas jumper, and that is, now I have a machine gun, ho, ho, ho. Uh. But it's very difficult to wear that out and about. Yeah, not now. Yeah, yeah. There's not, yeah. I wonder if something even like that would get you in trouble, like a statement on a T-shirt. Do you think that would cause uh, You a... can get in trouble for offensive T-shirts. But it's not offensive. Well, I don't know. It's not, they're not legal in this country, is it? Uh, someone could argue that they've, um, you know, if they didn't, I don't know. You probably, it's not like you go to jail, but the police would be like, please don't but, wear that jumper. Yeah, in an airport. I mean, that's that's. Yeah, yeah in an airport, you're asking for a clobbering, and I'd say, right, these yeah. Guys. You're just being a bell end, then. Yeah, my mate, my mate made a joke once. Oh no! Joke, um, thing, They're like anything to clear, and he goes, "Yeah, yeah, nothing except my gun." Ha, ha, oh ha, ha. Jesus! That hard. He was like I'd, I'd cosh him. I'd cosh him anyway. Did he, he finish the like sentence 12. before he was on the floor? <laughs> he, he was, was like, twelve. He was, yeah, he was like twelve or thirteen or something, and they were what? on a school trip to China, and like they were like, "Right, come here." Who fuck said that? Right, come here. He said that as a kid. Yeah, and he's just like, um, oh, I'm really sorry. I'm really in sorry. China, I did you say? No, well, I think this was like Heathrow. He was flying out oh. of the UK to China. This was a while ago as well. Tosh school that <laughs> school trip to China. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they went to um, all the terracotta warriors and all that. Yeah, that was the school trip. Yeah, for him. I didn't. I didn't go to that school. No. Oh, <laughs> I see. Right, right, right. I was going to say. Yeah. Think of saying that at twelve at an airport, having the balls to say, "Yeah." Oh, they were like, they were like, "Who the fuck said that?" This well, I'm glad. He, good thing he came, didn't say it in China. Dude, big dude came around and was like, "Right, who said that?" And he was like, "I did. I'm really sorry. I, I was only joking. I'm really sorry. It was really poor taste. I'm so sorry." He and didn't like, go right, on to that... become Spaghetti Man, did he? No, he did no, not. Okay. No, he's uh, Spaghetti he's Man's a dec- not going on trips to fucking the Terracotta <laughs> Army, is he? <laughs> he's a decent member of society. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one day, one day, I'll tell you about our, our weird trip to uh, Morocco. 
Is Have this one where you got kidnapped and forced to buy carpets? Kind of. Oh, the okay. most middle he... class kidnapping ever. <laughs> 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 buy a bloody carpet. <laughs> he was very scary, okay? He was a oh. strange dude. He was very scary. Okay. Yeah. Is that where you're recording from, Charles? We're just looking uh -huh. at the background. Is that where you usually record from when we do home things? Uh, it is my kitchen. Yeah, I think he's normally more over fascinating oh, right. listening for everyone. Yeah. He's more over to yeah. the left. It's a free oh, we, podcast. Yeah, <laughs> we've just been listing your background bottles. I mean, yeah, exactly. things are really listed. What's that? Is that a Tabasco sauce you have in the background? Well, yeah, let's let's pick oh, up things here. Charles. Let's see if you'll drink it. You should chug, chug, chug. I don't even know what. Oh, oh is that Moretto? Got... Is that a very like marzipan type one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh it's, lovely. Thought, it's not an aniseed, is it, Amaretto? No, it's like it's, it's sweet. It's like a marzipan. Tastes like. Oh god, I can't. Yeah. I can't stand marzipan. Marzipan. It's nice. It's nice as just a little uh, aperitif, what? you know. Nah, no, so. no. Yeah. Uh, well, we're all moving to Camden. You're looking forward to that? We're a new offer. The next show, our second season, we're going to be in Camden. The rock yeah. and roll. Are we doing it as season two? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to draw as many lines advertisingly <laughs> as possible. Moving the hundredth show, New Year. Uh, second season is that a plenty i just want to completely detach ourselves and let yeah, it no, adrift I, I, I know uh cam i used to work uh i used to work for some company down there and um that's when like i used to have to get buzzed in on the corner and uh, all these guys used to accuse me of being an undercover cop oh yeah I that's that. so that strange because yeah. remember when we were filming yeah, the scene yeah, yeah. and you had the <laughs> headphones in and i was looking at him my little spidey senses started going on i thought he didn't half look like an undercover copper <laughs> if only you knew as well yeah. like it's been so far from the truth <laughs> like honestly it's just it's an unfortunate. So yeah, yeah, it's just unfortunate. I just like the idea of you being some hard boiled cop drinking your amaretto. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Waking up in the morning just like, just like some more amaretto. Yeah, but remember, I mean, what was it, Donnie Brasco? You know, he he was well in he, he stuck with it for a good amount of years. Like he, he really was. So Charles could be sort of like really in depth playing a character here. We wouldn't know. I got I've gone too deep. Yeah, yeah. they need to pull me out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not leaving, yeah. Uh, we're making you a made man. So, <laughs> I wonder if that's all still going on, like the mafia. I mean, I know it's more. I don't know what it would be in America now. They're definitely still there. But well, I don't the know what sort that. of entity. Because with cameras and things, you can't really, unless it's more political. But I don't think even that. I think they got moved out of that sort of sphere. So how would they be making their money? Build it, companies, big companies. Tax. Probably drugs, isn't it? Still, yeah, drugs, isn't it? That, yeah. that low level. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I'm not talking like a packet, you know, like a packet. No, I know of... what you mean, but you think I thought they've either collapsed or because you well, no, because because I mean, mid level, mid level, and and wholesale. Like if you're if you're selling like keys, <laughs> like stop, stop, hang on. Shit. This always makes me worry when Charles because he sort of we make sort of general uh, <laughs> and, no, like and, and it, he yeah. starts talking like but measures, but like, yeah. 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 <laughs> Time always, scales, all the like, logistics. He's got the confidence behind his sentences yeah. that's sort of slightly alarming. So go like, on, Charles. A friend told well, me they're too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, well, I mean, there's levels. There's different grades. Jesus, you know, here we go. Depending on the amount you want, and like, <laughs> and like, obviously, the more you buy, the cheaper it is. So, I mean, you know, if you go to the right people. So yeah, I mean, like, you know, there there is always going to be a, a market open for people who are selling. Decent, who are wholesalers and are, and are backed up by muscle. Yeah. But I mean, like, as you think, the mafia, because now you've got Eastern European things, you've got all the, I wonder, are they still the same entity? Like, even in New York, are there, is it that powerful still or not? No, no. It's, it's local probably, protection. Yeah, I think once you're dug in like that, aren't you? Mm. But then you think with all the grassing up and all the laws, the RICO Act and all that changing, surely that, and, and cameras... You should think surely most of that's gone. It's got to just be low level drugs, and but how low level? Well, it, that's the thing. This is not low level because if you, I said if you're selling like ten kilos of heroin and stuff regularly, to I suppose people, yeah, it doesn't like, take a lot. Yeah. That's not. That, but that's what about a simple transaction? I wonder the, then the money. having family names. I wonder if there's mafia family names in America. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you of can course. Still, there's still, you still, still there's still the five families. Yeah. No, really, they yeah, still they exist. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Jesus, you I don't know if the commission meet regularly or whatever, mm -hmm. like they used to. I don't think it's like it used to be, but like um, they are still there. There are still the families, and you oh, know, you God. can look online. I, I was reading a couple of months ago, and they had all about the um, the Gambino crew and all this. And, still, you know, yeah, yeah, still about, yeah. So it's still there then. 
But you just wonder how they're, they're getting away with things. If like they're not, they've just gone, right, let's just button it and just get on with business sort of thing. Stop being that high profile. That's all it is. They've changed the PR sort of thing. Is there a, is there a Mafia comic book? <laughs> they've done everything else. <laughs> <laughs> well, Batman, um, um, some of his villains are Mafia, aren't they? You know, the yeah. Falcone and all of that. Fa- yeah, yeah, yeah. And the uh, M- Masuchi, no, the Masuchi's. That's uh, Law and Order. <laughs> has, has anybody got to see the um the the the, the Godfather cut? Everyone seems no, I haven't yet actually. Oh, Apparently. what the third one? Yeah. yeah. Apparently, everyone's raving. Even like the people that are in it, I oh, said, really? I'm so glad okay. that it was been made. Now it's like put that to rest. Oh, uh, like the people okay. that are in the actual thing. Um, I don't know. Was it released? Was it a cinema thing? I think it was um probably a limited uh, screening, but I think it's. I'm not sure actually because it's the Cause Godfather I Coda. I think it's called the Godfather Coda. Um, I'd be interested to see how they say I can't see how they can save it because it was pretty bad I don't think it's that bad I think it's more that it's um, yeah here we go Uh, Godfather Coda Death Michael Corleone is it out then? uh, 88% on Rotten Tomato 7.6 on IMDB 60% on I mean I know these things can be review bombed and whatever Yeah, but is it one of these things that's gone straight to TV or like is it where is it? Uh, I'm not sure to be honest I didn't even know it was out yet. No. How to watch Godfather? If it's getting reviewed, it must be uh, like HBO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but I mean, obviously, everything keeps getting pushed back, doesn't it? Limited, a limited theatrical release on fourth of December, followed by digital oh, and just... Blu-ray on December eighth. Okay. Both beginning in the. Oh, so, so it's uh, on DVD. It's going on DVD. Uh, I assume and, and VOD. Yeah. Yeah. What's um, VOD? Uh, video on demand. Oh. Like te- like Netflix or something. Uh, pay per view. More. It's more pay per view. Oh. Really. Um, but I, I had a thing because I was like. The other day, I was like, "Oh, I, there's nothing on telly," and I was like, "I wonder what Wonder Woman two is saying because it's been released." And I was like, "Yeah, I pay a tenner. I pay a tenner right now to watch Wonder Woman two. Why not? Yeah, screw it." So I actually sat down and googled it, and I was like, "Oh, it's just in the cinemas in this country." And I was like disappointed because mm-hmm. I was like, "Yeah, I would have actually." <laughs> It, yeah, yeah, it, it shows that the the the, the oh. switch in uh, mentality. Yeah, so yeah, I was yeah. like, I would have actually spent money and like happily watched it at home now, you know. But like, and I was a bit pissed off that it was still in the cinemas. Yeah, the um, uh, I found a thing about the cinema. I remember, uh, um, oh god, what was it? It was a few years ago, and somebody was looking for somebody to run the cinema, and I th- and it wasn't one far past me. And I thought any, anything could be done. You don't need to learn. You just need a couple of weeks there to figure everything out. It's fairly simple. And I thought. I, was, I thought, right, it's going to pull me off track slightly, but it was regular money, and I was always jumping around doing agency work anyway. So I thought having something that's quite simple to run and quite nice to be at, that mm. and that and having a regular wage because it was a decent it's wage as well. Kind of fun as well. It I seems, mean, yeah, yeah, it was basically nothing. I think it was like twenty seven and a half thousand pound a year. And once you know what you're doing, it sort of runs itself. You know, it's not a lot to do. So I started looking into it. And I spoke to somebody um, who who ran the cinema, ran a cinema, and. Uh, anyway the job didn't end up happening it just it was going to become long more long winded winded <laughs> but i found out quite a lot and i was asking this guy i was saying about them how because the, i wanted to get somebody on the, the podcast actually to talk about like managing a cinema i thought it's quite interesting to figure out it's like brick getting the priest on you don't you think you go how does it all happen um so i thought i'll get somebody on from a cinema but a lot of them wouldn't come on so I was going to try and get somebody from a, lo- a localized cinema, but anyway. So um, I was asking him stuff, and he was saying, um, he, he said, if you want to support cinemas, he said the local ones are a bit knackered because they just told what to do by the people giving them the film rights. They they just the bigger ones that have a bit more sway in. Well, they can bargain, uh, but um, he said that. Um, but even the, even then, they don't have. Too yeah, much. he said they've got basically nothing. He said, but he said, but they're big enough where they can have a they can put a word in to sort of. But it well, doesn't matter. I, I, I know that AMC. I know that AMC had uh, gone to big negotiations with um, uh, uh, over the new Star Wars film that was over uh, on Christmas last Christmas, um, because they insisted that like even to like the biggest some of the biggest chains in the world, they insisted they had to run it for like six weeks. Yeah, they they basically tell you what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and what he said is, he said that, that how, why there's such a big push immediately for that first weekend. He said because it's they get money based on a gro- on a scale. So the first week of the cinemas being out, the films being out, the film, the the the, the movie takes I think between ninety and ninety five percent 
of the takings like that much and so then the, 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 the studio or whatever yeah the there. studio then the second week it's like 80 to 85 and the third week it's like they take 70 to 75 and it's all individually negotiated but he said that's basically what it is so if you want to support the cinema you have to go in like the last weeks because that's when the cinema gets the most money. That first weekend, that's all going to the movies. That there's 90 to 95 percent that goes straight to the movie companies. He said, so you have to look at the cinema. He said, what they they they're basically a, a sweet shop that also plays cin- yeah. films in the background. That's where they make their money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He said, so I know he said people think we're ripping them off. He said, but that's how we make our money through the sweets and the food and things like that. He said, we don't make a lot of money um, uh, when the films first come out. So he said, yeah, he said, if you want to like help the cinema, he said, don't turn up that first week because that all goes to the bloody movies. Come the third, fourth, fifth week when it's down, that's when most of the money goes to the cinema. I is is that why the opening like weekend box office is so like? Ex- yeah, he said that's what the big push is. Is that, that, that that's why that those numbers? Oh, the yeah. opening weekend so important yeah. because that's when they because they can make back the budget basically. Yeah, you know, on a good weekend. They well, you think ninety to ninety five percent? Like that's a lot of ch- right. that's a chunk and a half. That's a big. Think of having that in, in anything where the ninety five. What we're going to take? You go because really they're showing your film. It's not like they're not doing anything. Like, without them, you're not showing your film anywhere. But to take ninety five, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not making any money, are yeah, you? But to be able to, yeah. but what it was, it was something in like the nineteen thirties or forties, where there was some sort of deal, like laws changed. I can't remember. I'd have to look it up. But a law change, a union law, or something changed, uh-huh. and there was a big push against it. I think even like Charlie Chaplin and all these big stars was against it. But something changed legal wise, and that's when all the money started going to the. The, um, the 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 films um and their thing is well we're taking all the risk like it, it's our film sort of thing but you go yeah but jesus you think at most you'd take sort of 75 percent but the marketing costs are so enormous that's the problem yeah but it's, they say that the just uh, seems like depends. a lot of money it depends on the, how much the film costs but as it, for the blockbusters apparently the uh they need to take two and a half times what yeah. they cost it's so at least double two, the budget. Yeah. yeah. So if a two, film costs two hundred million, it needs to make over four hundred million at least. Yeah, but you know, there's a lot of shareholders in there. They're oh, not there, going well, there's a lot of creative. Like, yeah, oh, there's a lot of creative accounting. Yeah, the, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. They, they and there's just a lot of people getting commissions and, mm. and cuts and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's that thing in Independence Day um, when uh, they're talking about the aliens and everything, and he's saying, "Well, how you know?" Because they're trying to convert all the alien technology, and who's paying for Area Fifty One? And he goes. Did you actually yeah. look at the accounts? You thought they were spending two hundred thousand dollars on a hammer, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 all that yeah, kind, of, yeah. and that's what's happening in these films. Yeah, it's true. They, they, they pad out the budgets a bit, mm-hmm. don't they? Yeah. Would yeah. you remember in World in, in World War Z in the book where they they find out what happened afterwards, <clears throat> and um, they when they realised that like Buckingham Palace and all these big castles became like forts, it was because when terrorism started to become big. They suddenly spent a month, lot of money on uh, renovations, <laughs> but the renovations were like building underground caverns and putting bulletproof windows in and all this sort of stuff. Isn't it the story yeah. that the Queen stays, doesn't she? She stays in the Windsor Castle. I could probably listen to that again. But yeah, it was basically, they said like, the, they were talking about the budget. He said, yeah, all that money, that wasn't like little bits of money. That was going to fortifying the building. We weren't, we weren't cleaning the windows. We were putting in triple bulletproof windows. <laughs> well, that's, I'm assuming that's why they, they spent, uh, they, they were doing the House of Commons up, aren't they? And it's, um, it's costing 600 million, 700 million or something. Yeah, they put Wi-Fi in or something. Yeah, that's the, this also because <laughs> yeah, it's sinking. Oh, oh really? Really? Yeah. The ground, mm. oh. The, it's, the, well, it's on the harbour. It's rotting. It's a leaky yeah. old building. It's Victorian as well. Because you've got, over the road from it, you've got Port Cullis House. And that's, uh, so it Who's doesn't that? look, but it's called Port Cullis House. And oh. that's another, um, they're saying, why don't we just expand that or build something else like that? That's a modern building that can be used as Parliament building and turn the House of Commons, or what? well, palace of westminster let's turn that into a museum yeah okay uh, i'm sure there was something a few years ago where they was they, there was like a, it came out that the builders were charging like seven times the amount to do oh, I'm something sure they wouldn't do. Why not? yeah yeah and yeah. it's like the, the company that they've been using for 50 years do you know what i mean one of these sort of things um there was i remember when um um uh, so i did removals for a few years and there was um there was a big com that was sort of a, a low level company that was well known, but they suddenly I think it was t- 
Tony Blair. Might have been Tony Blair. Might not have been. But um, when they move people in and out of um, uh, 10 Downing Street, uh, when they become the new prime minister, they always use the one company they've been using for like forever. And it was, I think, with him or who came after Tony Blair? Gordon Brown. Uh, Gordon Brown, yeah. Who, well, who's before Tony Blair then? John Major. Major? Major? Yeah, John no, it must Major, have been yeah. Tony Blair. It might not have been, but anyway. Um, yeah, they they'd suddenly used a Do new company. you know roughly what year it was? No. I th- no, God, no. I think it was Tony Blair. The, the okay. others don't ring a bell. But um, so, yeah, there was a big, th- strange thing that um, they suddenly he used like a different. Oh no, it was Tony Blair. I think they, uh, he used a different um, raw removal company. And uh, the thing was, why it's in the news was because a load of things went missing, <laughs> like when the, and there had to be like an investigation. Um, and like the removal men were a bit half wits, like the, the the press was sort of talking to them. And while they were sort of smoothing up, to, pretending to talk to them, they were taking photographs of their itinerary sheets of all this stuff. But then what happened is the um, afterwards, like thirty thousand pounds worth of stuff had gone missing from these removal men. It just obviously pocketed things. And you go, you bloody idiots! Like if you're taking over, you'd have, the boss would have to be there, like on that day, going right. I'm watching all of you. <laughs> Because they're, they're not like being paid. Tri- it's just a removal company. It's no more special. And they blacked out all the the name of the company. So it was just nothing. But you think, oh, come on. You're moving the bloody... Don't start thieving, especially on the first term. Get yourself in the door. Don't start all... Start- because the problem I can see it is like one of them thinking, I'm just going to have this here. And then the other one's thinking, oh, no one's nicking it. Oh, he's having that. Yeah, I'll have a bit. Yeah, oh, oh, everyone's having a go. Yeah, I'll have a bit of that. Yeah, yeah, just bung it in there. Then then they, oh, we are, yeah, this is a proper company. This is like the gut. This is the the prime minister's office. It's all being tallied. But yeah, there was stuff that was handing from like African princes and things worth like 10,000 pounds. I went missing and this went missing. Um, But yeah, uh, how did we get onto removals? Oh, anyway, let's get off that. Um, so, uh, what you, what are you doing now then? Up to uh, New Year? Anything exciting? Uh, just enjoying Tier Four, <laughs> loving life. sitting indoors <laughs> and just going, just staring yeah. at the wall. Yeah, staring at the walls. Um... So, am I technically allowed out the house? Yeah, you're allowed yeah. out the house. Yeah, oh, I am. Yeah. So it's not getting worse. The Tier Four thing. It's just staying that um, you, you don't go out unless you have to go to work, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So it's a bit like it's basically lockdown. Yeah, it's basically, Charles, what but it's localised. What did you say the other day? You looked up something about podcasting or was that previous? Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they were talking about, because um, basically the the whole of the, the southern part of the, the United Kingdom now is is in tier four, they call it. So yeah. that is effectively a lockdown. So everything's closed uh, except for food stores, larger food stores. But media well. production can go ahead, can't it, or something? Um, it said you're allowed to travel for work because I did check because I think at that point I was in a tier three and I was tra- I was going to travel into a tier four. Yeah. So I was going to travel into London. I was in Reading. I was going to travel into London. So I did check and like they did say you're allowed to travel for work because I was like oh with because there have been guys at Paddington Station, there have been uh, police oh, really? at Paddington yeah. Station occasionally saying, "Excuse me, can I ask you why you're traveling?" Yeah. You know what I mean? Is this essential travel? So I was looking. Okay, what is actual yeah. central travel? So I went on the government website to actually look at the the law and the you know the actual precedent. Um, so they were saying that work is okay, and specifically under that, they labelled uh, media, audio visual media, including podcasts. Oh, so. so technically, we can still record on location. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hang on, one second. <laughs> one, one second. I just got to write okay. something oh, down God. here. <laughs> podcasts my, my can go ahead. <laughs> Slash no excuses. Right, I've, got, I've got that there. Paint, got, paint fumes count as excuses. Yeah, I've got yeah. that there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so, I, well, so I wasn't too sure. So what's that noise? Do you want to hear that? Like Hello. submarine noise. Hello. This is a free podcast, everyone. <laughs> that was weird. What's that noise? It's like a submarine. Yeah, it just went boop, boop. Did you not hear it? Nope. Oh, it must have been Krems doing something. Okay. Um, Someone's laptop. Yeah. Well, I haven't got a laptop, so yeah. Um, okay, then, so we can technically still do that. Oh, I'll, I'll have to yeah. speed everything up then. Um, so yeah, so basically, we're moving to Camden. Uh, hey, is, sunny is there Camden. Any, is there any cooler city, or is that the coolest? You know what I mean. Like, there's no like, where's the cool place what, to be? What borough? You mean or where? Like area yeah. in London? Yeah, Camden's pretty cool. What? What else would you put on there? What would be on the list? Probably Hackney. 
No, get out of it. Camden, that's being a bit Brixton, Brixton's posh. Brixton's. No, but gent- in, in Brixton's cool, gentrified you know, music. now. Music. Brixton's be, being gentrified now. Like, honestly, it's not like even how it was about 10 years ago. You know what I mean? <coughs> yeah, but it's not. There's no history of music and, you know, live live music and that, that sort of industry behind it. Yeah, oh, I mean, Brixton is. Brixton does have uh, events. Yeah, and but, music that was, and stuff, but if you put them all on a par, Camden is surely up there. <laughs> Bless yeah, you've yeah, got the, Soho, you've got the Soho Camden was, Town. Soho, I would say yeah, probably more yeah. in terms of. Yeah. Soho's no, Soho's been, trendy. It's not cool. Well, Soho's <laughs> been, again, is, is gentrified now, and it really is. I mean, yeah. it, again, even like five, ten years ago, it was still a bit seedy. It was still a bit rough. No, I um, definitely, with all the music scene and everything that's come out of there. In fact, I think the pub, I don't want to say where, but the pub right <laughs> next to us was where... Um, Amy yeah, Winehouse. Right. It was like yeah, Amy right. Winehouse. Well, that's going to give it away. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just have to narrow that down. Pub no, where was, Amy Winehouse No, I was thinking, no, okay, but I was thinking it's far enough right. away. There's a few near us, so it doesn't actually give it away. No, okay, 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 all right. Well, well say, having looked on Google Street. <laughs> <laughs> Although, um, no. a, a zebra crossing near where the Beatles <laughs> used to record. Yeah. <laughs> where the crow does fly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Although, as I said to Andrew, we are a couple of floors up, so we are away from, like, well, I've just heard that noise again. Did you not hear it? Nope. No. I think that's you. And I'm not moving, though. So I think the not... Navy are coming for you. Right, yeah. Um, it's like, like the Mafia. It's making that noise when you know somebody's on the line. <laughs> the, the tap the line. Um, yeah, so, no, I think Camden's the coolest, what do you call it, borough, town, city? I don't understand the difference. Charles, he just wants us to tell him we're in a really cool place. So just yeah, we are. We're tr- we're tr- tr- I, 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 cool. I'm, we are. Got... We're with it now. Yeah. So I, that makes us the coolest podcast in the. Like Shoreditch, maybe? No. no I didn't think these are trendy places. Yeah, but it's cool now. Again, Shoreditch was cool about five, ten years ago. Yeah, but this is all trendy. Camden's always cool. been cool. Camden, that's what I mean. Stable. It stayed right, the test right. of time, which um, that's like the black dress or the black suit. It's always been there. It's it's it's, it's stayed true to its roots. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, I'll leave it there. But yeah, no, it, ha- <laughs> it is. It, there's no, I don't think anything else touches it. I was thinking of even before me. I thought, no, that's that's definitely. It's nowhere cooler. At least there's nowhere cooler than Camden, because it is. Yeah, it's always much, been yeah. the same. Uh, um, um, yeah, so we're going to be moving there. New location. Um, for anyone that bothers to go on YouTube, <laughs> you will see that a new office, a new kitted out office. Um, and it is a com- we are cutting ties with <laughs> everything we've done before. That was a test podcast, the one hundred shows for one hundred. <laughs> this is like EastEnders. They made a joke of because they had to break for um, uh, for COVID. They had to take a break, and so when it came back, they jokingly said, "Are you ready for series two? <laughs> 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 so we're now a hundred episodes of series two. No, yeah, okay, but we're, so we're, this, this is because we are in uh, Camden. It will be a very a lot of rock and roll references. So this is our second album. This is the the best one. This is our long it's our difficult second album. Second album. If you yeah, love leatherwear and tattoo parlors, yeah, forget about it. You know? Yeah, if if you like big plastic boots, <laughs> buckled shoes, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, and yeah, long yeah. leather jackets, yeah, the, corsets, yeah, steampunk hats, yeah, yeah. steampunk, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. that still? Oh, Candom is great. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it just does what it says on the tin. You get it doesn't change. It's, you get what it says on the tin. Um, if you want to, yeah, if you want to buy a bag, bag of oregano for twenty quid, yeah, if you want to get ripped off time, twenty-four drugs. hours a day, you hang around the tube station. Yeah, well, Charles knows because he's scouting them out <laughs> on, his own, on his beat. I was, uh, I did, um, uh, uh, I, I, I thought, let me just go for a walk. I was there about half ten the other night. I went for a walk. I took one, I went around one street and I just heard somebody screaming. <laughs> so I just turned back. I thought, right, that's, that's me done. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> um, I remember having something like that in a, a pub near, in Brighton, this is where, uh, near to where my mum lives. And uh, I won't say what it's called. And it's, it's not a nice pub. But my brother and I, this is a while back, my brother and I hadn't been there for ages. And we were like, I so I just want to go in a pub and play some pool. It'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's in the middle of the day as well. And and, and also, like, once you get in there, it's for, yeah, like going also, in, going in's a bit, sometimes it's one like like in the in the Western, everyone turns around and looks at you and gives you funny looks. Once you get in there and sit down and drink, 
you, you're there staring at everyone else who comes in. So. Yeah, you would yeah, be one of the ones looking out. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it was middle of the afternoon. It was like, look, we're not looking for trouble. It's not like, oh, it's a, cl- <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. you know, like how pubs now now turn into discos and whatever. Yeah. It's not like, oh, people are going to be fighting over the, girl, you know, who looked at whose girl or whatever. And we're in there playing pool. I'm like, look, see, everything's fine, and we're playing away everything. And then just hear this, yeah, and if he says anything, I'll cut him, and then I'll cut you. And I was like, well, about time we're hitting the old dusty trail. (laughs) (laughs) Finish our drinks. Nope. (laughs) I remember I went for a job interview in this pub. Um, uh, I didn't do the interview. Uh, I remember I didn't realise because I was like... Can I I I interject here very briefly? Theo, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry, can we we take a bet? What do we think is going to happen? Yeah, which is, is it some sort of horrid advance from yeah. some some drug addled person? What is it? What, are you gonna see. have to let's talk? Your, are you gonna have to talk your way out of something? Yeah, let's see how this one plays out. These no, are good. Well, okay. I basically like I, I I was like, oh, that name sounds familiar. Um, I didn't think too much of it, and then like the night before, I googled it, and I was like, oh, that's that really crappy rough pub. And I'm like, oh, shit. And so, like, I turn up there. They they, they wanted the interview at, like, 11.30, whatever. This was years ago. It's, like, 10 years ago, whatever. So I walked into this place, and it's, like, 11.20 or whatever. Walk in, um, stood there, have, had a look around. I think it's the first time I've been in there. And I was like, oh, that's a bit of My wi has dropped. Two, you're right. I can still see you in here. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so there were two two old ladies at the bar. And she said, and one of them said to the other one, um, well, my son, yeah, they go, how's your, no, one of them said, well, how's your son? She said, well, yeah, he, they, they found, they convicted him for the murder. Oh, um, God. Even though he, he wasn't the one what yeah. stabbed him. He just kicked him in the head when he was oh, down. God. Nice. And I just went. Mm, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Walked, carried on walking, <laughs> went straight to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, here we had go. Wee, Classic. Had a wee, freshened up a bit, and went. I'm not working yeah. here. <laughs> Murder. <laughs> straight too far. Straight back out again. <laughs> just and standards never, have changed. Never thought about it again. I was just like, I'm not hanging around on the bar yeah. listening to these biddies talking about. So you like, draw your line at murder. That's the. Yeah, that's the... listening to like uh, tales of murder. Yeah. <laughs> And I love the fact of like, what's worse is he only kicked him in the head. Is it like, oh, that's your defense? Of course, oh, he must have been innocent yeah. then. Yeah. yeah, he was, he was, he was, he was, oh, it wasn't his fault. He's like stomping him. Oh, he got stabbed and they're like stomping his head. And I was yeah, like, and that's what he told you. So yeah, that, that's what yeah, he admitted yeah. to. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, I, I think we're we're going back to where we should have been all along. You know, the uh, I think we were pushing our luck at the <laughs> last place. Every time I went through there, I thought, right, I'm going to get pulled up here. <laughs> Let me just get to the road, get out the car, get in the office as soon as possible. <laughs> oh, dear. I literally did have a police car slow down once to look at me going in. I thought oh, they're going to say, but they didn't. Um, but I did have sort of like a boxing t-shirt on with tattoos hanging out <laughs> let me see a big boobed and tattoo t-shirt <laughs> no it wasn't that one they would have been died laughing if they'd seen that one <laughs> <laughs> that always gets them um yeah so there we go so they, they, that this is our 90 night show this is the, the our final test show <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> we're gonna be really good next episode yeah promise. i'm just talking to the advertisers now this is <laughs> being really yeah. good not guaranteed <laughs> yeah yeah um so i'm thinking of trying to make it a no swearing show from now on so, but so I'm trying to interject guests. Well, I'll, I'll feel the social pressure and not to swear. That's the only way I can get over it. We're lots of priests and us on the next year. Bishops, um, yeah. Um, reminds me, yeah. I've got to email some people. I forgot about that. Uh, <laughs> One sec. I, I, I did, priests. How many Hail Marys did he say? Yeah, I yeah, did. Yeah. Um, I watched uh, Soul. Oh, okay. S O U L. Uh, S O U L. Yes. What's this? A new film or? It is a new film that's just uh, released on uh, Disney Plus on Christmas Day, oh, okay. and um, it's about a man who dies and gets lost on the way to heaven and tries Who's to come back. It? And uh, Jamie Fox, Tina Fey, um, other people, other people. Oh. Yeah, many, specific. many more. <laughs> like, yeah. um, also starring it, other people. Yeah. <laughs> And others, yeah, and, and the rest. Um, yeah, it was good. Um, oh, see, my girlfriend wasn't impressed. I yeah, didn't blow my didn't blow my my nips off, but um, I was like, oh, that was that was nice. 
Is that going to go on the poster? Is that the poster quote? <laughs> Didn't blow my nips off. <laughs> Enjoyable. But I was like, oh, this is positive and affirming. And I'm like, ah, I, had, I enjoyed the ending. I thought the last like 10, 15 minutes were good. I, I didn't actually, I didn't like the way they portrayed the afterlife. I thought that was a bit. Why? How was it? A bit Disney. It, it, it wasn't fleshed out. It was over. It was overly fixated on detail but also wasn't fleshed out enough if if that makes sense so it tried to it tried to go into some detail here and there about oh when you die this this and this happens here's the rules um but then there were also huge swathes when when they started explaining rules more in depth i'm like hang on but what about this this and this and why and if this happens then what about that it's best to keep it vague sometimes you know what i mean so you just go like okay. actual religion yeah 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 so okay this is all kind of eh, it's just, it's like magic. I, I remember having a discussion with someone about, they, they were writing a script about, um, yeah, about magic and, you know, warlocks and fairies and whatnot. And I just said, you don't need to ever explain it. You just say, oh, there's magic. And I'm like, cool. I, I understand what magic is. I get it. You know what I mean? I don't need yeah, to yeah. have it overly explained. Like time travel. You go, yeah, here's the time machine. We go back in time and, yeah, cool. Got it. I, I don't need it. I don't need a detail mm-hmm. on how the fucking time do, machine do works. Have- it's fine. Do you remember that film I said to you about the other day? What was it? Um, oh god, I've forgotten the name of it. The, on the, the the Christopher Lee and oh, what was it I, called? I, my messages got wiped. <laughs> my my, my what? Uh, with Peter Cushing, wasn't it? Yes. Oh, what was that name was of it? Night? It was like Beast of the Night Terror, Mongoose. <laughs> oh, I can't remember. It um, but it, it, if you, uh, I'll, can you look it up somehow? I don't want to touch my phone. See I can try. Um, but yeah, so it's with Christopher Lee and um, who's the other one? Uh, Peter, Peter Cushing, Cushing, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, Peter Cushing. I think there was a there was a good story. Oh, um, well, hang on, let me say what I was going to say. So it is basically it's if you watch it, as I said before, it's like it's like the original thing. It's like the thing, like it's a good horror present. express. Yeah, that's it. Oh, it's uh-huh. great. So it's got the two of them it looks, in there. It looks great. Really every great. scene you just watch. It's like what well, it's like Columbo. It's like nothing's happening, but I like I carry on watching every scene, and. Um, it's basically, yeah, it's about a, a, um, something that gets brought on board. It defrosts. And this is like, it's nothing to do with it. It's never, it had nobody worked on it that worked on anything else. It defrosts and um, then it becomes, it, it starts to go into different people's bodies and it takes over. But it was actually quite interesting because when I was watching it at the beginning, I thought it's like one of these films. You're like, oh, that's bloody stupid. Well, out of rubbish. How does that make any sense? But then they explain things knowing you were going to say that at the beginning. Like, oh, they actually took time to go, no, you know why that stupid thing happened that you were probably laughing at. This is why it happened. You go, oh, okay. That was a nice little twist. Um, but all the scenes are good. And what I liked about it is like when you watch the, the remake thing, you know, the prequel or whatever it was, the recent mm. one, you know, the bit, there was a bit where, um, she gets the guy at the end and she realises he hasn't got a f- no, an earring, isn't it? When She's just about to get in the plane, the helicopter with yeah. him at the end of the thing, 20, whatever the date was. Um, and she realises he hasn't got on it. And th- yeah, something like that. But she's got the flamethrower there, whatever. And she, she says, I'm just going to go and get something. And she sees he hasn't got the earring. And then when she points the thing at him, I thought that would have been a good moment to sort of like talk to it. Do you know what I mean? Go like, what are you like? You can't go anywhere now. I've got this thing. I know you're the thing. And then it didn't. I thought, oh, you could have had a like f- fleshed out a bit more details there that the original thing didn't do. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, I, I thought, oh, they've missed the thing there because you literally had it pointed. It would have known you knew. But what they do in the Horror Express is there is a bit where they sort of corner the thing and it's back in its original form as whatever. I don't want to give it away, but as this person. And they have a conversation about like, like, what are you? And and they have this debate about, because what it, it turns out is, because you go, well, how does it know how to do that? And how does it know how to do that? But you find, oh, I don't want to spoil it. But there's a reason why it knows how to do these ridiculous things at the beginning. And it turns out that it's been around for like millennia and it's jump and every person it jumps from, it takes what they know. Oh, so okay. it, the, it actually has a conversation with it going like, why are you doing this? And he's saying, look, you can kill me right now. I've got the secrets to like every generation before I'm everyone. I was there. I was at that place. I knew that person. I was that person, blah, blah. And I thought, oh, that's really interesting that they've done that. They've actually had a conversation about why are you a monster? You don't really get that. Like, why are you there? Why are you these things? And it comes to that moral point where he's saying, you can kill me, but 
I've got the secrets to all these things and all these places. And the guy has to sort of go, right, what do I do now then? Do I kill this thing that's been there throughout history that knows all this stuff? Or and I thought it was really interesting. And also, when you, uh, I was looking up the story, I think, um, was it Peter Cushing's wife that died in 1971? Yeah, I think it was his wife. So him and um, Christopher Lee were like best friends. And, oh, can you look up somebody's wife, Christopher, uh, Peter Cushing's wife, before I go on this tangent about it? Because it'd be uh, it's 1971, 1970, Peter Cushing's wife, death, something like that. <clears throat> uh, Helen Cushing, yeah, died in seventy three. Yeah, and when she died... He was like, you know, one of these people that was like, was like seriously distraught that she died and he didn't want to do movies anymore. And he went into a bit of a sort of depression. And um, Christopher Lee actually talked him out of it by getting him onto this film. And it took him a long time. <clears throat> and he basically said, he, start, he said, I, uh, I, I gave up trying to talk to him about getting over things. And I just started reminding him about all the films they'd made and how much fun they'd had and things like that. Um, and he said to the point where Peter Cushing was having like, he couldn't sleep after his wife died, like he couldn't sleep. And Christopher Lee would actually moved in with him and would actually stay with him in his bed to sort of like help him through the night terrors and things like that. Right. Yeah, and eventually like got him out of the stupor and got him onto the film. And he said the film then helped him just forget about everything that happened. But I thought, ain't that great? Like, his mate just got like literally mm. stay, he slept in the same bed with him because he was having night terrors and he used to just talk until he fell asleep and then just convinced him remind, he said I was reminding him about the fun times we had making films and that got him out of it so when you watch the film you see them both in the scenes you go oh they are best mates like this film saved him really that got him back in movies so the whole thing if you just watch it oh it's great the whole way through the conversation with the monster at the end or everything he, um, you got it. you should really watch it you can watch it on YouTube it's on HD mm. So if you're on one night, oh, trust me, just put it on and you just, the, the brain will just switch off and you'll start going, your brain will just like everything it sees on the, on the, on the uh, screen. Um, anyway, that's my top tip. That's my uh, Christmas top tip. It looked like, yeah, it looked like Victorian The Thing, basically. It is, yeah. it was, if, yeah. you, if you like The Thing, you will like this. It follows yeah. the whole arc through. It's actually better. I think it's not. <laughs> oh, it, strong no, words. no, it, it's the, the, the first, it. The, the 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 1970s or 80s the thing that just worked perfectly that just everything the personalities um just the flow they went for that um who was the director that got everybody to speak over each other it's a term now um oh it's a term of how you get people to they started doing it in the uh, 50s yeah what is it called um well, oh, i'm not gonna method, that, isn't it but yeah well, i'm not gonna think of it but um yeah he he said um the director was it Elia Kazan? No, it was something more Americanized. I think it was with an M, something M. But anyway, he um, well, it was Meisner, wasn't it? Stanford Meisner was the method guy. Might be that Meisner. But anyway, no, there there is a specific there's a dialogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It? But um, dialogue stuff. Yeah, the he, when he was doing it in the fifties, he got criticized for it. But um, so they used it in the um in the making of the nineteen eighties the thing. And the director actually was it John Carpenter was the director. Yeah, John yeah. Carpenter. Yeah. yeah, he made the studio pay for the actors to spend two weeks together, just so they would become comfortable in the flow of conversation before any filming started. He said, so then when they are starting filming, they they feel that comfortability that I know you, I can talk over you. I'm not waiting for your line to finish and all that yeah. sort of crap. And that little things like that really come through in that thing. Like you feel like they know each other. They are completely different types of people. They're not all, you could get, you could see them in a, a modeling a catalog. Do you know what I mean? They did look like just blokes and people. Um, yeah. And Wilford Brimley in it for goodness yeah, sake. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, but it all looked great. So it really the wasn't. The thing will and, give you diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> but I put this Horror Express in terms of there's nothing you can point out why you like it so much, but just watching it the whole way through, it just every scene just works well. Um, um, what I was going to say is, have you? There's a, a, a zombie film that completely passed me. I'd never heard of it, and I thought that's got a good cast in it, and it was like amazing reviews, and it was called um, The Girl with All the Gifts. No, I'd seen the trailers of this. Yeah, it's not like um... it's got like Glenn Close in it, and like yeah. she's a prominent. I, I I know the film you mean, but if you were to, I, I, Charles, make sure you write this down. The girl with all the gifts. It's a good. So it's. I, I don't can't remember if it's British. I think it is. I think British. it is. Yeah. If oh, you imagine, okay. you know, like what was the horror film? The um, the werewolves, the British one, the soldiers, dog soldiers. Oh yeah. yeah. It's 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 a cross between that and World War Z, but not like the joke. Like not oh. from the World War Z. Twenty eight days later, it's where there is a virus that happens. 
and it comes out in spores. They've copied um, what's the, oh come I'm not gonna remember it now. You know where the ants go up, they get the spores released. It gets put, it goes up the tree and it bites on, and then it dies and it falls to the ground and it releases spores that then infect other ants. Have you heard of that? No. Okay. Well, there's, there's I was I was thinking it's like The Last of Us. There was a video game, oh. and there were sort of these spore things that were infecting people. And so well, and yeah, there's something in the animal kingdom where it, an an ants get infected, and it makes them go up to a tree and basically just bite on and then die, and the spore then grows out of it, releases pollen things okay. that then drop to the floor. And what they've done is they've taken that and they've used it in this film as like this is what it's just it's in the air. People have got killed. Um, that, and what it is is there's they've got a group of children together um the army they've put them in the room and they've realized that some of them have got that sort of 28 days later thing or 20, where they're half have got it and half haven't but the, the the zombies don't care about them and then there's one really special girl like this young black girl that and um who i don't know how they found this actress honestly she's amazing but um, glenn close is like looking after her and they have to do experiments on them and there's all these moral quandaries about what do we experiment with and blah 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 Anyway, then there's the art. they realise they have to get out and all this thing. But it's done really, really well. And Glenn Close in it is like a mate. You know, it's just Glenn Close. And mm-hmm. the actress, the young actress in it is fantastic. Oh, there's no, you can't fault anybody in this thing. It's, it's done really, really well. And when I sort of thought, I've never, I've never heard of it. I've never even heard of it. So I don't know why it didn't happen. But you can watch the trailer online, The Girl with All the Gifts, 2016. Um, but yeah, if you want to watch a good horror film, it's, mm. it's fucking absolutely fantastic. Uh, so that's my uh, second top tip. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, stick that on the air. Um, right, okay. Well, so that's, us, that's our uh, little pre-Christmas, uh, after-Christmas party. <laughs> Wasn't much of a party. Season one it? finale. Yeah. <laughs> Charles has done all the partying for us with his Whee! bottle of Amber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's that. So um, it's going to take a, a couple of weeks to get this new office kitted out. Sweet. Um, and then we can get back to the... Uh, the interviews with various interesting people from varying backgrounds. Um, <laughs> you've been basically been getting a B roll for like. I know, it does feel like <laughs> this was always meant to be the battle. Like whenever people ask me about the show, I'm always like, "Yeah, and kind of you know, if we guests don't work, you know, if it doesn't line up with the yeah, guests, yeah, and what, yeah. so we can keep crushing out content. Yeah. It's just me, Charles, and Theo, and they're like, it's been like that for about." Six thank months God now. Trump's, <laughs> thank God Trump's been around <laughs> giving us content. content. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, to be hang honest, on, hang on. How did that election result go? I go, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the thing, I'll tell you what though, I, if I, I've got about, I have subscribed to like about 10 different podcasts and there's only one that's carried on going. So all these lightweight podcasts, have, like they've all dropped off. At least we didn't drop off. We stayed through it. Or they take actual breaks between their series. No, they've all like, I mean, I, honestly, there's like, what, I've got 10 and like one has recorded. The rest have all just dropped off. All these trendy ones with somebody who's interviewing somebody, they've all dropped off. All these, they've all dropped off. Even ones that could be done, dropped off. Can't be bothered, mate. You know, we're not getting paid. There's no advertising at the moment. Whatever. They've all dropped off. And we've stayed true. We've been out there in the type, taking on the waves, battling through. We've stayed true, mate. So again, all the lightweights have just dropped off. They'll all be back. All the little lightweights, they'll be popping up again soon. All the little podcasts will start going. Um, but they won't beat us the, 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 to be the coolest podcast on the planet. No, um, true. Yeah. So yeah, I've got I've got like a, a load of interviews. I've just I kept buffering backwards and back and back. Um, so we've got a few to uh, get going with. But the, our first show will be a, 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 a inauguration, a matriculation into Camden show. I've got a load of Camden facts that I'm going to be going through. I have asked the mayor of Camden to come on. But yeah, she hasn't got back to me. She's probably busy at the moment, so she hasn't got back to me right yet. I'm sure she will, but she hasn't got back to me at the moment. I'm assuming the mayor of Camden is just a homeless lady who lives under a bridge and wears plastic, wears bin bags. Right. I, so, really I just, I just we'll crossed her sure. off the list. I just crossed her <laughs> yeah. off the list. Uh, oh, correct. Well, I know we don't normally ask sorry, credit, sorry. but... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or she's a credible politician and, and a lovely lady and a great... Well, I didn't know they have to change every year. The mayors have to change every year. Like, the, it's in law. <laughs> yeah. I love the idea of like, oh, well, um, perhaps I should listen to the show, <laughs> see what it's like. <laughs> The mayor of Camden lives under a fucking bridge. I don't know why that's my. And where's bin bags? Yeah, that's and where's bin bags. Why, why, where's bin bags? Yeah, and collects tins. Yeah, I know she should be <laughs> sat in the kitchen swigging amaretto like a classy person. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> there he goes again. Ah, it's good. 
Right. <laughs> Not that hearts. bombshell. Yeah. Oof. Oof. It's good. Should we say goodbye? Christmas special. Way. <laughs> I can't hear you, Theo. I was like, has he has he dropped? Oh. He has, isn't he? Yeah. I thought I was like, he's gotten suspiciously. No, we've lost Theo. No, we lost Theo. That's the mayor of that's the submarine that's come See, from. this is the government. This is this is QAnon come to life. Yeah. Quite really is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> In this light is the of strangest these, end. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We might call it quits, everyone. We haven't, because the problem is we haven't worked out the order of succession. There's no, like, <laughs> vice president, and then it's... Uh, mm. uh, who's next? It's Because then it's speaker minority, isn't it? Then it's Nancy Pelosi. Because it, it's not how they... In the film, they always do it that, oh, it then goes um, secretary of state, then this person, then that person. But it's not. It goes vice president, then it's their... Uh, yeah, speaker, yeah. Minority leader. Speaker. Yeah, speaker, sorry, yeah. So on that bombshell, uh, we'll say goodbye. We still can't hear you, Theo. No, sorry, Theo. Yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, <laughs> it's gesturing. a film, it's he's, film he's from waving, the 1970s. Smiling and waving, Let's do the yeah, uh, charades it's... thing. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a good time. Yes, yeah, stay safe. Could be alive.